It's time for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group with financial advisors Kevin Corhorn, Mike Bernard, and Josh Gregory. Welcome to another episode of the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group, where every week we are helping you take your next wise step in your financial life. Thanks for being with us, friends. My name is Mike Bernard, here with me in the KF2 studios, my business partners and friends, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Well, the stock market has given quite a shakeup in recent weeks here between the coronavirus and oil price wars and who knows what else. You may be feeling like, boy, my investment portfolio is not going the way I want it to. You may even be wondering, are there changes you should be making within your portfolio? Or better yet, are there things you should be making, changes you should be making within your overall financial life? So today, we'll help you make a wise decision with your money at this crucial time on this episode of Wise Money. That's right. And we always are talking about what you are thinking about. My goodness, everyone is thinking about what in the world is happening to the markets and really, what should you be doing about it? And that's what we're talking about today. If you have any questions or comments, you can find us online. Just search the wisemoneyshow.com. We're right there. And you can find out more about the show and learn more about Corhorn Financial Group there as well. You can call or text questions in 574-222-2000. That's 574-222-2000. And then all over social media, just search the Wise Money Show and follow us there, like us there, and you can even submit questions there as well. So, well, Josh teed it out there. The market is having a strong, strong reaction. The markets are crashing. They're in turmoil. There's great uncertainty. Things are volatile. And I'm not fear-mongering here and spreading fear. That's the fact. That is what's happening right now. Are your investments adapting already, like some of ours are? Should you make changes to your investments? What other changes should you make in your portfolio or in your financial life? That's what we've got coming up today. But first, why? What's happening and why? You know, this this has been an absolutely fascinating time in the investment world, in the economy and everything. It reminds me only a little bit um, of the 2008-2009 situation because it's rare for economic conditions to be noteworthy. You know, most people, it's like, eh, they don't care about what's going on in the economy. As long as my paycheck lands in the account, as long as my investments are going in the right direction, I, I don't care what's going on out there. But this is a time when a health care issue, so health and wealth are kind of colliding right now, mm-hmm. right? Between the coronavirus and what's happening in the stock market. And you, you might even argue that um, they have conflicting wishes. You know, when it comes to coronavirus and the spread of, of you know, an epidemic, quite frankly. Um, Pandemic. Yeah, it, it, as it spreads around the world, you're exactly right. Um, the, the concern is we have to change something in order to stop this, right? It can't be business as usual if you want to contain the spread of this, of this virus. However, economically, um, we are a consumer-based economy, and it, it needs to be business as usual. You know, the consumer needs to keep on spending as, as normal uh, to avoid a recession, which is, you know, a whole nother uh, economic health crisis, if you will. Well, so this is really the question, and I've gotten this a few times. Is the stock market freaking out because of the flu, you know, quote unquote? And I, I would argue that's not that's not the case. The stock market's freaking out because of the potential economic impact of the spread of this virus. Yeah, the market does not like uncertainty. And the uncertainty that we're seeing now is causing, I believe, a disruption in the stock market. The stock market is ruled by fear and greed. In the short term, it's completely irrational. So we're seeing some pretty erratic Uh, what you might think is irrational behavior. But if you peel the onion back a few layers, I wasn't interested at all. When when I hear stuff about the coronavirus or this or that other thing, I'm like, yeah, 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 whatever. You know, Zero Hedge said, you know, maybe this came out of a lab in Wuhan, whatever, conspiracy theory. But when I talked to my friends who do business in China and they said, hey, we can't fly to China and they're not letting flights go to China until the middle of May. And this was in January. I said, wait a minute. There's got to be something here. So I've been I've been listening and reading and studying and, and um, 
you'll find lots of people who have become uh, contagious disease experts. Uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> what took some doctors eight years to get a degree in um, has taken me two months. But but it is it is interesting if you look at what China did. I mean, China shut down all 32 of their Apple stores in China. Or Apple, I'm sorry, Apple did. So all 32 stores were shut down. Now, they reopened 28 of them. But China had what they would call fairly draconian measures to slow down the spread of this virus because the problem is if the if the virus doesn't get slowed down then the, it will overwhelm the system and so that's what they've done that's what Taiwan has done uh, Hong Kong um, and you're talking about overwhelming the healthcare system correct right? Like there's only so many beds available for those who are in critical care and, and whatnot. Right. So they then then what the, the healthcare workers have to do is prioritize who are they going to help. Yeah. Are, d- does the ICU get filled up with coronavirus patients or does it get filled up with people who've had heart attacks? And mm-hmm. so those are, I'm assuming, fairly awful decisions to have to make if you're in the healthcare. But the, the thing that China has slowed down on is the manufacturing and so that could cause a ripple in the supply chain, which, and you know, when I look at our the health of our economy, we've been on basically about an eleven year bull run in the stock market. Um, the U.S. the February job jobs numbers in the U.S. were fantastic. Yeah. And so there are all these great underlying indicators that suggest, hey, we don't currently we don't have a financial problem. But we might have a health problem. And then the question is, what is the extent of it? And the, the, the fear, I would say the fear of the coronavirus is spreading faster than the coronavirus itself. For sure. I, I do wonder, though, I, I keep coming back to how is this impacting the economy? Because I, just like you said, Kevin, you know, it's taken these medical professionals all these years to become experts in this. And... As a financial advisor, we're now kind of called to be doctors as well and, and share some enlightened people on what's going on with this virus. And I, I, have, I have no clue. And I've done research just like you have, Kevin. But to me, that's sort of immaterial, at least for my profession, because mm-hmm. it's having a real economic impact. If the, if, and and, and I'm, I'm just speculating here, but if, uh, if, you're, if you have the money to buy a phone, but Apple can't get you the phone, you're not buying it. That hurts the economy. I had some clients who are supposed to be going on a cruise in Italy next week. It was canceled. If you want to go see the Lakers game and you can't, if you want to go f- jump on a plane and fly uh, you know, across the seas and you can't, that's all going to limit the economic activity. And that is going to limit profits, which is going to create kind of distractions in the market. Yeah, if you were going to go to Austin to the South by Southwest yeah. event, it's canceled. So the the bi- these bigger events that are getting shut down as they've shut down schools and said, hey, you're still going to be responsible for the learning, but we're not going to have classes until April 5th, which is the case in, in some of these schools. Well, how does that affect me if I am, if I work in the cafeteria? And they shut the cafeteria down for a month. Or, or how does that, you know, if they if they do that with elementary school kids, how does that affect you if you're a parent and you mm-hmm. need to work and now you need to figure out child care and you say, I need to stay home, right? So to me, this, this is very much about the, the actual people that it's impacting. I don't mm-hmm. want to minimize that. But mm-hmm. our specialty is in finance. And this is having a real economic impact. And the question is, will it continue? How deep will it get? No one knows. And without really the the hope or really just a hope of some sort of containment or vaccine three months out at the earliest, yeah, guys, this could get worse before it gets better in the economy. You're exactly right. And, you know, a lot of people are wondering, OK, is this going to lead to a recession? Maybe more importantly, is it going to lead to a bear market? That's the impact that it has on your your nest egg. Mm-hmm. If you're approaching retirement or you're in retirement, this matters to you. And, you know, we've said for, for quite some time that we don't know what's going to cause the next market downturn or the next recession. We don't make predictions. Is the coronavirus a big enough deal to, to pull that off? I don't know. The question is, are you prepared for it? 
Yeah, that, that's exactly right. Were you prepared? Do, did you already have a system for managing your investments to account for something as unpredictable as this? And, and, and then what other action items do you need to be taking? Do you need to make changes to your investments? Do you need to change some other things in your financial life? We're going to pivot off of what's happening and pivot to what you need to be doing about it. So that's coming up and more here on The Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. All right, YouTube, thanks for being with us. You are at the Wise Money channel. This is the Wise Money Show. Thanks for being here. Every single week, we post a new Wise Money Show right to this channel. It's a weekly radio show that airs in northern Indiana on Saturday mornings. And then frequently throughout the month, we also have a vlog that posts as well, all inspiring you to take your next wise step. If that sounds interesting to you and you're not already a subscriber, do me a favor, subscribe to this channel, turn on notifications so that you're made aware of every new video and all the new content that we post. Leave comments and questions below. Smash that thumbs, thumbs up button. And this is what everyone's thinking about right now. What should I do? How bad is this going to get? And you're not spreading fear. This is just fact. And we're about to get into some action items. So share this video. Leave comments and share it as well. Thank you very much. All right. <coughs> so I think we're ready to... I, I'm not sure what else would need to be said. The only thing was, uh, could this lead to recession? Josh, you, you snuck that in there at the end. So I think we can pivot into our investment approach. I don't know if that'll take the full 10 minutes. And if it doesn't, then we'll then we'll get into, okay, what are the what are the things that you need to do right now? And we'll start. And at some point, list. do we answer the question? And I don't want to add too much here, but it, it, the, the question, because I've gotten this a couple of times, why haven't we done a show on this topic yet? And th what I've told people is, look, th that's not that clients aren't asking that question. Non-clients are asking that question because mm -hmm. they still don't understand the difference between somebody who just sells investments and somebody who does financial planning. Mm -hmm. But maybe I don't know if we need to to address that or not. But I there should be some maybe explanation to the calm that we have because we're planners, mm -hmm. because we've been preparing for this for the last 12 years, and because 12 years ago we said we're not going to go through another event. That could fit right in here, depending on how we lay out the dynamic strategy. So um, I, what I would say, and if you're if you're hearing this right now, all the bonus content um, – uh, it comes through the YouTube channel. And so, you know, we did have a coronavirus and stock market update uh, about a week and a half ago. And hopefully, if you haven't seen that, I'd encourage you to, to check that video out. Um, but right, if you're just listening to the radio show, this is the first you're hearing us talk about the coronavirus and <coughs> clients haven't been wondering. No. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So maybe maybe that can fit in here. And Josh, I have you kind of leading the discussion on Sure. On dynamic, and I put in there. It, it might be helpful to talk about the why. Those three things, but who knows what I'm going to say? Add that, yeah. So, all right. What are the things that you need to be doing in your financial life right now because of the turmoil on Wall Street? Are there adjustments that you should have already made to your investments or should be making right now? What other adjustments do you need to make in your financial life? That is what we're talking about today. Thank you so much for being with us. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. My name is Mike Bernard. Here with me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Stay up to date on all Wise Money content. This is tax season. We've got chaos on Wall Street. Stay up to date. You'll find us online at thewisemoneyshow.com. And then all of our social media, wherever you're at, we're there too. So your favorite spot, find us there, follow us there so to stay up to date on all the Wise Money content. All right. So the stock market has absolutely, I, I don't know if crash is too strong of a word. I, I, I don't want to just deliver fear, but I, I think you'd call it a crash. It was the fastest correction off of an all-time high that we've ever had. It dropped 19% in two and a half weeks. I mean, that. so I think you'd cl classify this as a crash. The question is, were your investment, is your investment strategy, was it already prepared for this like ours was? 
This, the Wise Money Show is a show about financial planning and the financial decisions you need to make in your life and how to make them. This is not an infomercial for Corhorn Financial Group. However, we have spent countless hours perfecting and trying to get right our investment strategies. And for the past 12 years, we've been preparing for this exact time. And so we thought we'd share a little bit about our investment strategy and approach, especially with how it's been working right now with all the uncertainty. Yeah, you know, I, I was in the uh, the barbershop yesterday. And Look good. My, thanks. <laughs> um, high and tight, right? <laughs> nice and short. Um, my barber asked me a question. He, he said, Boy, I, I bet uh, your life's pretty stressful right now mm-hmm. because of everything that's going on in the yeah. market. And, and I said, well, no, actually, it's it's really not, Roger. I I, I feel like we're in a, a good spot with our clients right now for two reasons. And this is the same same response I would give to any family member that corners me and says, Josh, how are you holding up through all this, mm-hmm. right? Um, the reality is we, we do take a financial planning approach, and so... I feel like we've been having uh, conversations with our clients over the past couple years, just reassessing, reevaluating, are you positioned appropriately with your investments for your goals, for the right time frame, or do you have the right risk profile, all of that. And so I, I don't think any of our clients really should have been overly exposed to this. But then the other reason is, and this is maybe... I guess I would argue what makes our firm unique and what puts us in such a confident position when serving our clients is we have an an investment approach that has the ability to react appropriately when things are are starting to head in the wrong direction. We actually have a sell discipline built into some of our models and the ability to move people to cash very rapidly if necessary. Mm-hmm. And those those mechanisms have been triggered. You know, so we have a lot of clients with a lot of cash right now, which means that all of this craziness, uh, you know, down significantly one day and popping back up the next day, all that volatility, they're they're much more insulated. And uh, it's really a a methodology that says, hey, I want to be concentrated in the investments that uh, have great momentum and are the bright spots in the in the overall investment world. But I only want to own them when momentum is taking them in the right direction. I need to have an escape hatch built in as well to move to safety mode or move into something else that is, is uh, trending in the right direction. Having some investments that can react that way without it being reliant upon your own gut or what, what your sense is for what's going on in the market is important. It has to be a repeatable process. And because we have that in place and have for so long, like you, you just said, man. I, I feel like we've been, we've been ready for this, mm-hmm. and so it's not a stressful, stressful situation. It doesn't have to be, right? Yeah. That as we get into the the five different things at least that you should be doing to respond to economic kind of chaos, and who knows if we'll get into crisis mode. But whatever, wherever we are, the you know, I, I as I tried to remind the the folks on our team, look, the sun still rises in the east and sets in the west. Uh, just does it an hour earlier now. <laughs> and uh, But so there's nothing – what you need to do is control the things you can control. And I've gotten the, the, the question, so I bet your phone is just ringing off the hook. And our phones are ringing off the hook. The interesting thing is it's not clients. It's not existing clients. It's people that our clients are talking to because not only it, within our office, as, I, as we look at our, our 10 – client-facing CFPs, and I was doing this back in 2008 and 2009 with you guys, and it those were those were tough days. Those yeah, were yeah. really tough days, and we did we weren't prepared then like we are prepared now. And certainly, this I wouldn't compare at all what's happening now to what happened then. Yeah, back then there there was true economic chaos and crisis. We haven't seen that yet. We don't know exactly what may be coming, but for right now, there's certainly a calm before the storm. And and when when a when a tsunami's coming, people stand on the beach and watch the water recede and think, "What a beautiful day on the beach!" And five miles out is is a wave coming. So the question is, you know, what what should your response be? But um, the calls that we're getting are from people that are saying, "Hey, I I just talked to my friend who works with you, and I want what he's got." 
Yeah. yeah. The, the interesting thing is, so um, in, in 2008 and 2009, we were talking to another, um, another financial advisor in a different area of the country. We do, we do a, lot of, a lot of collaboration with other financial professionals to make sure we're up to speed and so on. And they were talking about a, a cell discipline. We started, we started looking at it. And, and over the past 12 years, we've enhanced and, and um, reevaluated and improved our what we call our dynamic strategy. And I remember back then, I was thinking about it right now because it is so applicable. We decided to, to have a diversified approach, but then complement it with a dynamic strategy to offer more diversification. So two different strategies that aren't gonna move the same way at the same time. And we said that was important for three reasons. Number one, during extreme market um, conditions, it's important to have a sell discipline, but also a buy discipline. If you're making a decision to change and get out of stocks based on your emotion, you've gotta, you've gotta then decide to get back in when you don't want to. And and history has just proven that is almost impossible for humans to do. So you've yeah. got a sell discipline and a buy discipline, a system for making these changes. Two, we said this is a global economy. And Josh used the phrase, and we used it for a long time. Listen, the economy is more global. McDonald's sells more hamburgers outside of the U.S. than in the U.S. If China catches a cold, it's likely we'll catch it too. That's what you said 12 years ago. That wasn't a prophetic statement, right? It, it was a metaphor, and it's true, right? What happens around the globe really does matter here at home as well, and we're seeing it in something as simple as just the supply chain. Right. You know, what, the production that does still happen here in the U.S. is still dependent upon components coming from overseas. So, so you, if you want, if you should be adapting because markets are starting to move all in alignment, you need to have a sell discipline and a buy discipline, a system. Second, we've got a more global economy. Everything's interconnected. But then third is with technology these days, people can trade more quickly based on different triggers and different systems, and they could trade 24 hours a day. We thought that could lead to more volatile and extreme markets, all justifying that you should have more diversification. And that's what's happened. I don't know if you saw some of the news, but they're blaming some of this volatility on some of algorithms and other things that say, if the market goes down 2%, sell me at this, at this spot. We have more volatile trading today. And now looking back 12 years, you guys are exactly right. The, our clients that we serve have a calm because they've got this more diversified approach. Not all of their money is moving in the same direction. And it's important also to note that Dynamic didn't start moving into cash um, as this was happening. It was starting to do that beforehand. And so really the question is, should you have a diversified approach and I'm not just talking about a, a diversified mix of investments. Should you have a diversified mix of strategies in your long-term investment portfolio? Neither one is perfect, but does that diversification between two different strategies or multiple strategies give the, you the opportunity to manage risk better and still capture the upside? I would hope so, okay? We're going to lead into... This show, The Wise Money Show, each and every week, but especially right now during a market crisis, if you will, the actions you take are amplified. They're more important. So what are the actions? What are the decisions that you need to do? We've got our top five and probably more coming up here on The Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. All right. A little bonus content here on YouTube, YouTube channel. So... Um, Again, this is not, this is, we're not, it's not an infomercial. However, during these sorts of times, likely you're compelled to make some changes in your investments. And so, sort of a, another benefit of having a strategy, a system that does it is, is when you feel compelled to grab the wheel, you know that you've already got a system that is adjusting for you. So, think of these, uh, these, these cars that can park themselves, <laughs> yeah. right? I've, I haven't done it yet. But the parallel park would freak me out. Like if you drive up next to a car and press the button that says parallel park, I would feel tempted to grab the wheel. Mm -hmm. But don't because you've got a system that's automatically parking that car for you. And, um, yeah, our clients have greatly benefited just in peace of mind and right now in performance. So I agree. Yeah. It, and knowing that – you know, we talked about this with the coronavirus. The people that are prepared 
are the ones that fare the best. And so it, it, as it is in your finances, the people that are prepared financially are the ones that fare the best, which is why I'm excited to get into the next two yep. segments here. But this is, okay, it, when the when the rest of the world is freaking out, how how do I present calm? But not just present it, how do I possess it? Oh, yeah. yes. So. Yeah. Okay. And I, I, I have to tell you, it is calming. Uh, I filled up uh, the car this weekend. I couldn't get thirty dollars into it. <laughs> Ten years ago, we were paying four dollars at the tank. Well, the, it's it, half. The summer of two thousand eight in Petoskey, Michigan, I filled up at four dollars and twenty six cents a gallon. Twelve That's years amazing. ago. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. So, um, we did we did not talk <laughs> about how. Um, we haven't seen what happened in the market since October 15th of 2008. What happened on Monday about the trading curbs and all that stuff? Do we, we're going to, oh. are we, are we going to deal with that at all or just, do you want to make that, just make a comment, bonus content here on YouTube? Cause I don't, I think well, we got to get into action. Yeah, items. we we need to get into action. Items. So I would just observe if you're, if you're looking and wondering what, what happened, what's happening on Monday, that was an interesting day because I remember thinking I haven't seen this uh, since. I I was thinking I hadn't seen it ever. Me too. Yeah. Yeah, and and so I went back, uh, did a little time traveling, and realized that October fifteenth of two thousand eight that happened. I think you guys were still suffering from frostbite from being in Boston. <laughs> yeah. Right. And I, I was in shock. Um, we were all in shock. Um, yeah. We really couldn't imagine what was happening. Now, Monday, when that happened, again, information is is travels much more efficiently. And so we knew what Saudi Arabia had decided and that they were going to flood the oil market. Sure. And so the question is, is it, was that drop, was that pr- almost 8% drop in one day in the stock market was that because of oil? Was that because of the coronavirus? Was that because of the supply chain disruption in, from, emanating from China? I mean, that's the economic flu that that yeah. that may catch all of us. And the other thing, I mean, to me, there's this has been a fascinating couple of months because there's so much to learn, and I've learned things that I I never had any idea that uh, I would. Um, I, but I've learned that China manufactures ninety percent of the prescription drugs that we take in this country. Isn't that crazy? That that is a little crazy. And maybe one of the things that comes out of this is we say, "Hey, we might rather have a reliable, a little bit more expensive supply chain than maybe a less reliable supply chain." Yeah. Who who knows? Yeah. Uh, but, not 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 at Walmart though, because we don't. We say, "Hey, if I can save three cents, I want to do it." And to save that three cents, you, you might have to get those parts made in China because their labor rate is two bucks an hour. Yeah, there's a lot of people that wonder whether deglobalization could be a result if this thing lasts long enough and spreads far enough. So bringing production back to the U.S. may be a more expensive option, but a more reliable one, well, as you said. Well, and I, I, depending on how long this thing goes on, but if the kids get used to learning from their professors from their computer – Mm-hmm. Um, it's a lot cheaper for Caleb to stay at home than it is, <laughs> yeah, to stay in the dorms at University. I mean, Michigan. so 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 there could be, there could be some capitalistic uh, benefits to all of this, to our response, our learning from all of this, right? I mean, well, I'm assuming there are going to be incredible health benefits that are. That, I mean, yeah. what what the scientists? I mean, I was thinking this morning. In, in in my uh, kind of contemplative time, how thankful I was for the kids that paid attention in Mr. Meisner's biology class, because <laughs> I I really wasn't one of them, <laughs> totally. Um, I wasn't a big science guy, but I was I was thankful for that. And I've learned. I mean, one of the things, even just in in response to this, I mean, you you need to be washing your hands like you just touched an Ohio State t-shirt. I mean, <laughs> you, 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 there are responses to this virus that I had no idea we should be uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. The, the the trading curbs really really quick futures. Um, it it stops at five percent, and they won't let you trade uh, below that. It can trade above it, but they stop it at five percent. Um, the major markets in the U.S. during trading hours, there's a 15 minute pause at seven percent drop. So we saw that on Monday. The there's a 15 minute pause. Is it at 15? I think so. And then it stops yeah. at 20. They close right. it. They, and, and so um, they will shut down trading for the day if we're down 20 percent. And, um, and and part of that's just herd mentality. You know, they, they try to get – it's the same reason why basketball teams call timeouts, even though that drives me nuts while I'm watching. <laughs> just play the sinking game. It's, uh, it's all momentum stuff. So Which one happened after 9-11? Because the market they shut they, the, they closed, shut them down yeah, yeah. and that mm-hmm. was just a proactive thing it wasn't circuit breaker going off right. right I I think that was a function of actually being able yeah. to so open they had to get the actual markets back online and all that stuff yeah, yeah. but I mean a, and because when they when the markets reopened I think they opened up down twenty percent or I, I don't yeah. remember but it was it was the meaningful. point is it's it's rare yeah for these things to actually trigger so. It's a pretty monumental thing that happened on Monday. Yep. All right, we're pivoting into action items. So Sweet. if you're watching on YouTube, I, I know it's it's this is a long show, it's about an hour, but stay tuned. <clears throat> Do you have a sell discipline and a buy discipline? A momentum strategy is part of your overall investing strategy. Uh, that's a consideration. And what else should you be doing? right now with your money in response to what is happening in the market and the economy. That's what we're pivoting to right now. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks so much for being with us. My name's Mike Bernard. Here with me in the KFC studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. If you've missed anything, you want more content, you want more direct action steps, find the Wise Money Show on our YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube, search the Wise Money Show, and subscribe to it, and like, excuse me, set up uh, notifications so that you're made aware every time we drop a new vlog. We actually had, uh, if you're wondering why we haven't done a show on the coronavirus yet, number one, we're not trying to spread fear. Number two, there's six areas to your overall financial life investments, just one of them. But then but then third, I would tell you, we were right on it. We, we posted a vlog video about what the coronavirus is doing to the markets, what you should be doing. So make sure you, you follow us on the YouTube channel. Just search Wise Money Show follows there. All right. This entire show is about the steps that you need to take in your financial life right now with what's going on in the markets, with the coronavirus, wherever this thing goes from here. What do you need to do right now? We've got our top five list. There might be honorable mention as well. The first thing ties right into this overall kind of um, multi-strategy approach to your investments, and that is you need to confirm right now that you're taking the right investment approach for your financial goals. Josh mentioned this earlier. One of the reasons there's calm with many of our clients is they've got the dynamic strategy, which been which has been pivoting. But but even but in addition to that, yeah, we've been because this has been such a long bull market, but because really we do planning, we know that our clients are taking, and you know, no one likes to see this volatility, but we've got their investment approach aligned with their goals. So if retirement's still a long way off, likely you're still taking high risk. Maybe you've got dynamic that's been helping, but you're still high risk. If retirement's on the doorstep or you're right there, you shouldn't have a lot of exposure to this. That's all around your overall financial goals and financial planning. Guys, what would you add to this first action item? Well, to, to me, the action item is to revisit your financial plan to determine are there any changes needed to your investment approach? You should never be evaluating your investment portfolio outside the context of your financial plan. Your portfolio is just a funding mechanism for your most important goals. So to look at how those investments are doing and not measure them against the progress you're making towards your goals is is really just you kind of speculating on you picking some investments that you think are going to make more money than others or protect you more on the downside. The, the reality is your portfolio should be 
uh, the prescription for that portfolio should come from the plan itself. Here, here's here's a great example. And Kevin, I know you're chomping at the bit to mention this exact one, but I, I'm going to tell it in the form of a story. Middle of this week, it was really after Monday. You know, Monday, everything's we hit a, the first circuit breaker. If you want to learn more about that, make sure you're watching the show on YouTube because we talked about it at the at the break. But Monday was just absolute chaos. So I'm talking to someone, and they were just a little worried about their overall investments because they have kids in college. And it was a very quick response where I said, yeah, the college money's up 1%. Up 1%, the market's now down 19. Yeah, up 1% because that's a goal. That's a goal and the kit. You're using that money right now. So it's all in safety. And it's actually some of it's in bonds, which as yields have crashed, mm-hmm. bonds have performed okay. And so that's, that's what we're talking about, investing in a way that's prudent for your goals. Yeah. Talk, make sure you're talking to your planner. Make sure that your planner is certified. So as you talk to your certified financial planner and you're looking at these different pools or buckets of money related to your different goals, make sure that the the, the investment strategy is consistent with the time horizon that you're going to need to access those dollars. Because if, you, if your 529 plan money is down 20%, and your first kid hits college next year, you might be using that money for your third child. Right. Yeah. That's right. So, hey, can I give one warning to you when it comes to investment reactions to to uh, market conditions like this? There is an investment tool out there that often sells like hotcakes during scary times like this, and I'm referring to an annuity product that. Some salespeople, this is the only tool in their toolbox, so it's the only thing that they talk about, and they just sell a lot of them right now because they'll they'll make claims like, hey, I can get you some of the upside of the market with none of the downside. Doesn't that sound wonderful, especially after a week like we just saw? And the, the reality is there are a lot of gotchas built into these mm. tools. You, th- There's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of risk. Um, of you getting into a tool that you don't fully understand or maybe don't have an easy way to get back out of if you realize uh, maybe that wasn't the right tool. That's an understatement. Mm -hmm. Right. So so just keep that in mind. I I guess I would be careful about a slick sales pitch at a time when you're you're a little bit more fearful or a little bit more anxious. Your, Your confidence should not come in a product. It should come in the process of planning. And if that process of planning leads you to that same product, that's great because it is a tool that can be used appropriately at times. It's just sometimes they're oversold, yeah. and it's usually in times like this. And I would just add something uh, in, a, in a little different vein. I talked to a client this week. Her 401K is down $50,000. Now, that's on a decent-sized chunk of money. She's in her mid-40s. So she said, well, you know, it's it's kind of discouraging to invest when my 401k is down $50,000. And I said, listen, you're maxing that thing out. So this is a buying opportunity. You're, you, if Macy's for Black Friday, instead of having things 40% off, said they're going to mark them down to 60% off, you'd be absolutely delighted. Right. And, and you wouldn't say that just affected the value of all the clothes in my closet. So I, <laughs> I would encourage you to say, hey, this is a if you are if you are buying, this is a buying opportunity. This is also a great time to get in touch with your risk tolerance to see, am I an investor and can I do it or am I a saver? Uh, that, that is a great segue into the next action item that you need to take. But I want to talk to you if you're about to retire or you just retired. Making sure that you've got the right investment approach is looking at what cash flow needs do you have right now or in the next couple of years, and where are those cash flow needs going to come from? If they're coming out of a target date fund, watch out. If they're coming out of a high risk, your long-term money, watch out. We call it your personal pension plan. As you lead up to retirement and as you're in retirement, you should have dollars segregated based on when you're going to need them. And segregated not because... Um, We like division and splitting things up. No, because they have different purposes and should be invested differently. And so if you're on the cusp of retirement, doing planning means you shouldn't have anything to worry about because your dollars should all be set up and aligned for that long-term goal. Now, let's get into that second next step that you need to be doing. This could get worse before it gets better. I have no idea. Keep contributing new money. 
keep contributing new money. You're buying things on sale. I love that analogy, Kevin, even though it might hurt your feelings that, well, but I just bought that sweater last week and now this week I can buy it on sale. Um, keep buying if you should have more of those sweaters, I guess, <laughs> uh, right? But, but continue to invest new money into the markets. There's a few other tweaks That's this. the key, though. It's into the markets. Yes. I, I actually met with a client uh, earlier this week who is about a year out from retirement. And he was ramping up his contributions because he's trying to get you know his nest egg to where he, he wants it ultimately. But he was saving it all into really quite conservative investments. And I, I told him, hey, we, we need to make a change here to be purchasing the investments that are going on sale, not the ones that are getting more expensive. He was buying more bond type investments and really needed to be beefing up the stock portion of his portfolio. And it, it seemed so counterintuitive to him. He was feeling like, no, I, I need to get more conservative as I get closer to retirement, right? And I reminded him, this is your last great buying opportunity before retirement, mm -hmm. right? The, the investments, as Kevin said, Macy's is having a great sale right now in the stock market. And uh, you, you want to load up when things are cheap. And the stock market is what's cheap, not those safer investments. Mm -hmm. So yes, increase your contributions, but don't be tempted to get too conservative necessarily with the future contributions that you're adding, as long as it's appropriate with your plan. Your certified financial planner should be bringing clarity, confidence, creativity, and calm to your financial life. We've got a couple creative ways for you to contribute new money into the markets at this time. And then we've got the other three action items that you need to be doing right now in your financial life. So that and more coming up here on The Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Mm, That's good. I feel like I could go for four hours here on this. This is so good. I know. Do we... Um... Josh, you said, and I, I just want to, I want to hear it again. It's, it's the process. That's where your confidence comes from, the process. And that's why we are motivated to talk about this, because we know a lot of people haven't been taking a process in their overall financial life. It's been bing, bam, bing, bing. And now you reach this time of uncertainty and there's this shakiness. There, there is uncertainty. That, that, in, that uncertainty that's happening around you happens within you. And yeah, I mean, no one knows the future. So that, there's a uncertainty that will always exist. But when, you, when you're following the right process, you've got that, that gives you confidence. And I, I feel like part of our role as financial advisors is to help our clients become more comfortable with uncertainty. That there's no such thing as a foolproof plan right? There's no such thing as a perfect portfolio. But if, you know, the, the thing that gives me some comfort, and I, I need to kind of preach this message to myself over and over as well, um, it, it's the simple fact that when you look back on history, the stock market has been climbing, climbing, climbing with frequent interruptions to that climb. And sometimes they're severe, sometimes they last a while, but they're always temporary. And to, to believe that, you know, somehow you're not going to bounce back from this one or we can't afford to take a hit at this stage in the game. By definition, everyone out there who's who's um, approaching the next bear market, they have more money than the last one. Mm -hmm. Right. So you have more money at risk and therefore you may have more of a, a tug at your heartstrings. You may have more emotion tied up in it. And that's why you have to go back to the plan. Am I on pace for my plan? Is this still the right mix over the long haul to be able to fund my retirement or fund my kids' education, yeah. fund whatever those goals are? It hasn't happened to everyone, but I've had a few where clients that over the past couple of years, the market has roared so much that we've looked and said, you're there. Mm -hmm. do, do you still want to take this level of risk because you're there or do you want to reduce risk? And I've had several that have said, no, let's reduce risk because I, I feel like it can't keep going this high forever. I'm not trying to time the market, but we've reached the goal. So let's start taking less risk. Because the fascinating thing is the people that have said, hey, the market's going to go down. It's it's overvalued and overpriced. They were half right. Yeah. They, and actually... It, 
as things go on, they may be proven to be completely right. But they were the they were right about the market going down. It's just the 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 mm. factors that caused the market to go down were these unseen yeah. events. And the problem with unseen events is you can't see them. Yeah. And th- that's exactly why, you know, as we've been talking to clients about this over the past couple of years, every time we say we don't know what's going to cause the next recession mm-hmm. and the next bear market. But that's that's one of the prerequisites, right? You have to have a very optimistic investor base who just sees nothing but blue skies ahead. And then there has to be some sort of a surprise. Now, we didn't know it was going to be coronavirus, right? Right, Or a really strange, irrational oil price war, right? right? But whatever it is, there's always some sort of a spark that gets the momentum going. There's always a first domino, yep. right? So, and I'd also remind you that Alan Greenspan, who, if you're listening, you might not even know who he is. Hopefully, hopefully, you do. Are said, you talking to Alan? If he's listening, s- yeah. Had <laughs> irrational exuberance yeah. mm-hmm. in '96. Yeah, the market topped in 2000. So, hey, listen. The, so, if you the if market you listen to him, and you then you sold '96. And the market kept screaming all the way up to 2000, four years later. I don't know if you'd been able to hold on to those words for four years as you saw everyone around you making money. I remember watching the Dow Jones Industrial Average hit 4,000. And we're, we, it hit 29.5 this year. Yep. So it, it's a permanent, it's a, it's a temporary decline in the face of a permanent advance. All right, four segment, land on the plane. We got to hit. Can we hit, can Kevin, can you hit really quickly? Contributing new money. Yep. The, yep, yep. How do you increase yep, your contributions? Yep, yep. Contribute your lump sums. Yep. Consider a Roth conversion if it's on your agenda. And then I think these other three will be shorter, but we just got to watch Yep. Watch our time. Yep. All right. What adjustments do you need to make in your financial life right now? What action steps do you need to take in your finances right now because of what's going on in the market with the coronavirus and everything else in the economy. That's where we're hitting. This is the Wise Money Show. Thanks for being with us. My name is Mike Bernard. Here with me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. If you've missed anything and love podcasts, you'll find the Wise Money Show on podcasts wherever you listen, whether that's iTunes or Google Play. Just search Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group and then subscribe to it. Rate us there. We appreciate that. That helps other people who are looking for um, podcasts on wise financial principles. Helps them find us. And then leave comments as well. That helps us also. All right. We are in the middle of the top five things that you need to be doing in response to this market turmoil, market crash. We left off on you need to continue to invest during this time. There's a couple creative ways that we'd encourage you to do that. Kevin. Yeah, one of the ways that you can do that is with your 401k. If you max your 401k every year and you have a plan that will do the match regardless of whether you're putting the money in, think, say, Farber plan, there there's some uh, technical complications to this. But if you're putting in 14% right now and that will get you – that's a, a run rate to have you max in your last two paychecks of the, of the year. They stop taking out because you fill up that bucket. I might go from 14 to 28 right now if if cash and cash flow allows you to do that. So you're hustling. You're going to get your money in by maybe August. And so you're going to be skinny on cash between now and August. And then you'll have a, a bigger paycheck from August to the end of the year. But I, I would tell you, hey, get that going. If you typically write checks for IRAs and Roth IRAs, I might just do that now. You say, well, we usually do it at the end of the year or um, you know, it's 2020. We'll wait until tax season next year to do that. I'd encourage you to think about getting that done right now. We don't know what the market is going to do. We truly don't. Um, I, If I'm predicting, it's going to go up and down. And so I, I would brilliant. Well, uh, yeah, I, I should have been a weatherman. So, <laughs> so the so so get the money in now. Hustle the money in now. That that is what I would inc- if you can, and if it doesn't create an incredible disturbance in your financial life, get that money in. 
Another way to, to buy more now is if you know you're going to be doing a Roth conversion. If you know, I, because my tax year, it's going to look pretty similar to last year. And last year we did a Roth conversion because I wanted to pay tax at these rates, blah, blah, blah. I'd consider doing some of it now. You know, we, we, we're not able to recharacterize and undo it. So if you did too much and life kind of goes on throughout this year and you realize, oh, I got extra income or I got a bonus, I shouldn't have converted that much. You need to be careful, but but consider doing some now because you're moving dollar or you're moving dollars over to your Roth and then you're able to buy more shares with those dollars because prices are low, giving you more potential appreciation in a tax-free environment. So consider that. All right, these next three action items are equally as important, but we're gonna hit them a little faster. The third thing that you need to consider right now if you have a mortgage, consider refinancing. Oh, Interest yes. rates have dropped like a rock. So maybe don't rush out today because it might take a week or two or three to have it settle in. But I thought the last mortgage that I got would be the lowest interest rate of my life and they're lower. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Every once in a while, as you're working with clients, you you through the planning process, you find a sweet strategy that's really going to make a major difference in someone's life. And uh, we, we found a client who needed to refinance, but we've been watching the rates for a year and a half. Wow. And it's like rates got just so close where economically it almost makes sense, but not quite. And now it's gone crashing through that threshold for this particular client. We finally got them locked at two and a half percent on a 15 year mortgage. Come on. And I, I'm it's bittersweet for me. I used to have a mortgage that I felt like I could could brag about, you know, how low the interest rate was. And now two and a half percent. It's the lowest interest rate I've ever seen in my entire career. This is going to be really, really nerdy. But but the 10 year treasury yield, the interest rate, the 10 year interest rate started at one year ago was at 2.6 percent. Today, it's at 0.7. I mean, that is absurd. If that happened to the stock market, there'd be pandemonium. Um, so if you've got a mortgage, I'd look at refinancing and make sure you make a wise choice. Then I'd also tell you, if you have savings in a high yield savings account or you're in, you have CDs, those interest rates are going down too. Okay. I'll say one more thing. If you believe that you are going to be relocating sometime soon or putting your house on the market, just recognize these low interest rates are good for your buyer also. So talk to your realtor about when the right time is to put that house on the market. You need to be aware of the economic environment that we're in, and more importantly, that your buyers are in. When we were talking about these top five action items, uh, this fourth one, Kevin said, this one's the most important. It's the one that you're not going to like, <laughs> but it is the truth. The fourth thing that you need to be doing right now, we don't know if we're heading into recession. We don't know. We don't know how this is going to go. We don't know if schools are going to be locked down. We don't know if public uh, places are going to be locked down. I, we don't know. So how do you get ready? You manage your cash flow. You update your budget and make sure you're on a three bank account system. That sounds like eat your vegetables, doesn't it? It absolutely, but it's true. <laughs> yeah, it's well, lost so steep. <laughs> yeah, it, it, absolutely. Well, the thing that you want to be doing right now is in in times of uncertainty, you want to seek wisdom. In times w when you're feeling disturbed and distressed, you want to bring calm to your life. And how do you do that? Well, one of the things that you do is you take control of the things you have control over. You don't have control over what happened in Wuhan, but y you have control over what's going to happen in your house. So I would say take control right now. Grab the reins extra tight. You need to be knowing where your money's going. You And now would be a time to get a little bit extra margin and look and say, hey, um, what could we cut? Do we still have that landline? Do we really need a landline? Everyone in the house has a cell phone. Um, and just go right on down the line. There's There are lots of things like this, but this would be a good time, if especially if you're so, social distance, distance. <laughs> social, you to say. <laughs> <laughs> especially if you're social distancing. <laughs> Jeez. So if you're if you're kind of self isolating, spend the time. Do something creative beyond just binging on Netflix or whatever else you might do. Yeah. And and look at your budget and say how might we change things? And then you know this is a little honorable mention uh, early, but I'd say gas is cheap. So if you want to do something, take a road trip. Yeah. Just 
get fill up your car and do a loop around Lake Michigan or something crazy like that. Yeah, I, I would. This is this is not the time to uh, to go skinny on the emergency fund. So so be careful about that. Make sure you know what the right amount is that you should have set aside for emergencies. Make sure you're also disciplined in funding that what we call delayed spending, which is looking out ahead on known upcoming expenses, things that you know you're going to have to do anyway, paying that life insurance bill, paying the home and auto insurance bill, uh, something like that, and make sure you're saving so that you're not relying on a bonus to come or something like that to fund those things. All right, the last one, the fifth, the fifth thing that you need to do right now in your financial life is if you haven't started a financial planning relationship, uncertainty about what do I do, what steps to take, now might be the time to start financial planning. Absolutely. You know, we we are big believers that a decision about your investments, just like a decision about your, your tax picture or your insurance package, your estate plan, all of those decisions should be made within the context of an overall financial plan that looks at your whole financial life through multiple lenses so that you can make wise decisions for your future. And if you've never done that, if if all your investment decisions up to this point have just been based on the recommendation of a broker or an investment guru that you trust, but maybe they don't fully understand your entire financial life and how those investment choices really are going to play out with your most important goals, I, I would just invite you to reach out. You know, we have a team of financial advisors who can help you bring all these components of your financial life together into one plan so that it's, it's cohesive. You know, you have a team of professionals that can collaborate together and help you have the right context for a decision such as, what should I do about my investments in this type of environment? Yeah. I hope this information, this content was helpful to you. If it was, I would say get on that podcast, share it with your friends, get on, jump on YouTube and share the content. Just go to the, just search Wise Money Show and you'll, you'll have access to this. So I hope you have clarity and confidence in the midst of this and that you're seeking wisdom. That's all the time we have for today. On behalf of Josh Gregory, Kevin Corhorn, and myself, have a great weekend. We'll see you next Saturday for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. Securities offered through Silver Oak Securities, member FINRA slash SIPC. Advisory services offered through KFG Wealth Management, LLC. Doing business as Corhorn Financial Group. KFG Wealth Management, LLC and Silver Oak Securities Incorporated companies are unaffiliated.